today. So what we are going to do is we'll run through the material and then we'll open up any questions that you folks have. So we are joined by a few of my colleagues from the Office of Federal Emergency Relief Programs. We're joined by Karen Kuziak, who is the ESER coordinator, as well as Natalie Owens, who is our procurement analyst. And today's goal is to really walk through what the process is for a late liquidation extension, define what that means, and then highlight the requirements and share the application process with all of you folks. We anticipate there will be a number of questions. Again, there's uh, two participants from the field, so we'll have an opportunity to really engage in that questions and answers and determine if, if late liquidation extension is a viable option for you folks at the, at the district level. Thank you, Wendy. Wendy's here uh, because she works with several different school districts. Great, thank you for joining us, Wendy. So essentially what we have for information is directly from the US Department of Education. So our obligation date for ARP ESER 3 is September 30th, 2024. And the automatic statutory liquidation deadline is January 28th of 2025. That liquidation deadline is for all entities, the pass-through agency, the sub-grantee, as well as the Department of Education. So invoices from the district, our team reviewing and processing, and then payment received at the district level. So the, the full cycle of reimbursement is required to be fully complete by January of 2028. A late liquidation extension could be up to 14 months, and that would take us through March 28th of 2026. We provided you with some resources from the US Department of Ed that are hyperlinked on the slideshow, which we will share on our website. So we talked about the obligation date and that obligation date is really important, but also identifying what an obligation is because there's different ways in which obligations are defined by statute. So again, we talk about the obligation date for ARP ESER 3 is September 30th, 2024. And all obligations need to be made timely and properly to even be considered for a late liquidation extension. So when we talk about these obligations, we have a few on the right-hand grid that are highlighted in red. And these are the ones that potentially may be eligible for a late liquidation extension. So you can see that they're, they're defined by the fact that they are services or work conducted by someone contracted. So not an individual that is um, a, a teacher in your district or uh, an employee of the department because neither one of those would fall into C, they would fall into B. So really looking at the projects that you folks have, where some of the delays may have presented a challenge for the district. But again, this, this definition of obligation is statutorily required, it's statutorily defined, and this is what needs to be reviewed when we are talking about a late liquidation extension. So liquidation means the drawing down of funds, and I spoke briefly about that entire process, right? So a district um, has an expense that they've generated and they've had the process of submitting it for reimbursement. The Office of Federal Emergency Relief Team reviews that reimbursement request. We process that reimbursement request. Our colleagues in the Department of Administrative and Financial Services also reviews that reimbursement request. They approve or deny it for example, if they approve it, they then say to the US Department of Ed, here is X number of dollars of expenses that we need funding for. The US Department of Ed draws down the funds, provides it to the account that we have within the main Department of Education, and then we uh, cut a check for our districts. So that entire process 
is what liquidation is. So in statute, it talks about closing out and, and having 121 days to close out the work associated with ARP ESER 3 and any other funding sources through the federal government. So that 120 days that we mentioned, which is January 28th of 2025, is part of that closeout statutory requirement. So what an extension alludes to is within the statutory requirements, there is an opportunity to, for any proper and timely obligated funds upon review of written requests, also known as an application made by the grantee, which is ourself, the main department of education as the pass through entity on behalf of the department but also on behalf of its subrecipients. Our subrecipients in this conversation is our SAUs. So based on that written request and specific facts and circumstances, there is a potential for the US Department of Ed to review the application from the SEA, the main department of education, the pass-through entity on behalf of the SAU and approve or deny a liquidation extension. So some of the key takeaways is there, there is a written process that needs to be completed on behalf of the department, but also our subrecipients. Our subrecipients, the SAUs, must complete an application. However, the, the reviewing agency to determine approval or deny of that late liquidation extension is the U.S. Department of Ed. So what we highlighted here is the, the U.S. Department of Education's extension request process. So they have an application that we as a grantee must complete for the SEA, but also for our sub-awardees or sub-grantees, the SAUs. So this is part of the application that we would submit on behalf of our SAUs. You can see that there is some information associated with our subrecipients, and that information that needs to be submitted to the US Department of Ed is being collected directly from our SAUs, which is part of our application process. So they also go into, um, when they provided the FAQ for the late liquidation extension information, they highlighted some, some key components that I wanna highlight for all of us here today. Essentially, we are maintaining autonomy for the subrecipient process, the determination and the oversight. So I alluded to the SAU application process, and that's essentially out of this bullet. We have the autonomy to design an application process to gather the information for you from you folks to submit to the US Department of Ed. We, as the grantee of the funds, must confirm that only the subrecipients in need of a late liquidation extension are included in the application process. And that bullet in particular is where we, we wanna make sure that we're thinking about the timely and proper, proper obligations, the type of expenses that potentially an SAU would submit in their liquidation extension application. The third bullet says, uh, should use the discretion and oversight. So really thinking about the level of risk where we are with the district, where the reimbursement requests have been with the districts, the engagement we've had with the district. So really thinking about what might um, create a greater level of risk should we engage with an SAU for a late liquidation extension. Again, the collection of particular materials to confirm that it was timely and proper, to determine that um, these items could not be secured within the period of performance or process before the liquidation, the automatic statutory 120 days liquidation period. Again, we also talk about the information needed to confirm that all of those items have been met by the dates associated in bullet number five. 
and then we may we have the potential to adjust the date for the subrecipients um at the grantee level based on the grantee's specific need so again we're talking about the sau and really defining what that means for an sau and the specific expenses because it is not a blanket time frame that is awarded to liquidate the funds and again the liquidation is just the drawdown of those funds that's what the liquidation extension is to draw down those funds because work has been contracted and has not been able to be completed by the end of the period of performance, 9-30-2024. So we are asking SAUs, should they feel that they have a circumstance that may need or warrant a late liquidation extension to complete the application that we have by November 1st, 2024. So again, it is not necessarily that, it is not needing more time to expend funds. It is more time for services to be offered through a contracted agreement that was timely and properly before 9.30 based on some delay that that work is going to, to have to continue because the item was not completed before 9.30 or in the automatic 120 day liquidation period. So again, it is not a tidings amendment. It is not just more time to utilize the funds. The obligation date has not changed and will not change. So um, the link that we had in the previous slide has questions associated with a, different, a couple different components of this work. So we will need a list of each project along with a description and the amount of funds. So as you can tell, based off this first bullet, it is very specific. It is not a statement of, well, I've, I've requested reimbursement for half of my award and the other half of I would like to submit for a late liquidation extension. It is very specific. It is project X had this delay, had this description, had this need and address this component. And this is why we need the extension for project A and the remaining funds that we haven't been able to liquidate within the automatic 120 day statutory period. Um, as I mentioned, we will need that specific information. We will need the detailed justification about why an extension is warranted or being requested. We will also need evidence that demonstrates that the funds were properly and timely obligated. So thinking about those contracts, thinking about when they were determined, thinking about when documentation was signed, when those funds were obligated. What we did here was we just highlighted the questions that we have directly on our SAU application process. Um, so you can see the first few questions are just uh, demographics and contact information. The second half, so six through nine, is really that, that granular data about the financials associated with the late liquidation extension request. So how much funds were awarded, when, how much was obligated, how much would be reimbursed as of 9.30, how much would be reimbursed as of 12.30 in that automatic 120-day liquidation period. And then questions nine through 11 are the granular data that we talked about in a couple slides previous, it really talks about how much is that binding agreement? Why is the use of funds, um, what the use of funds is going to be utilized for and where is the justification for the request? We have some assurances or attestations that will need to be signed off um, and also an area for additional information. You can see that the, the survey itself or the application itself only has about 13 questions. However, there is gonna be additional information that is needed and will need to be um, retrieved via a different method than the survey. And that is the, the contracts, um, the additional information about um, the verification of 
the obligation. And those are things that we can't embed in the Microsoft form because we can't upload PDFs or uh, documents. But essentially the questions associated with uh, the justification is the additional information is needed based on question number 11. So we hope to review any submissions as quickly as possible. Um, however, we, we know that we have a quick turnaround time to the US Department of Ed. So if there is a request that's submitted between now and the end of January, we hope to be able to review, uh, excuse me, the end of July, we hope to be able to review it and reach out to the districts. We are watching that submission for any uh, new information because again, we wanna be sure that we have all the information that we need from the SAU before submitting on behalf of the SAUs to the US Department of Education. So when we are looking at the information that's submitted in the SAU late liquidation extension application, these are the things that we will also take into consideration. The SAU's risk assessment, whether or not all the funds have been obligated for allowable activities defined in the application. If the justification for the request is aligned to the, to the US Department of Education's objective of late liquidation extensions, and then also any of the documentation that, we've, that we can confirm timely and properly obligated funds and the need for a late liquidation extension. So you folks may uh, be well-versed in your main DOE risk assessment, but essentially this slide is just to kind of highlight some of the things that we collectively as a team, but also as a department look at when we conduct the annual risk assessment. Here is more of the um, specific questions that we as federal programs teams need to respond to annually. So you can see there are a couple questions associated with the award size, but also the complexity of the programming. Um, we also have questions in regards to submission of materials like an application, performance report, and reimbursement requests. So unfortunately, if you folks are not meeting those deadlines, that is something that's considered in your risk assessment and plays into your risk assessment level. So what we will do is we will review all of the submissions and we will try to do them as timely as possible and as close to the submission as possible so that we can retrieve any additional information that we may need from an SAU. We will review it. We will provide a response and approval or a deny to the superintendent, to the coordinator and to the business manager so that you folks can plan accordingly um, when it comes to knowing if this is even a potential that the US Department of Education would be reviewing. And then uh, your risk assessment for FY25 for other federal funding may be impacted because again, uh, going beyond the period of performance and beyond the statutory automatic statutory 120 day liquidation period does create additional risk in the use of funds um, and, and impacts us collectively as a team, but you as a district in regards to the funds that you have at the local level. So we provided the link at the top of the slide associated with the FAQs for um, the liquidation extension that the US Department of Ed has put out. We pulled out question eight and essentially it says that if we have subgrantees or us as an SEA determine that there's certain work that we want to submit for a late liquidation extension, we are required to monitor, review, um, and process everything as we would if it was in the period of performance. So thinking about the review of invoices and the, and the mechanism in which we do that, um, in addition to monitoring or performance reports, all of those items will continue 
through the end of the last reimbursement. So I've provided a couple key contacts at this point for this process. And then we're also going to open it up for questions. So as I mentioned,